Welcome to Money in the Bank with Frank. Happy New Year. On that uh, note, figured we'd talk about the seven steps of financial planning. Get that off everyone's bucket list. Over the next coming weeks, we're going to talk about the seven steps. Used to be six, but now there's seven. And uh, in our first episode, we're going to talk about understanding the circumstances. All right, the first step in financial planning is understanding the input variables. So understanding the client's health, their life expectancy, their family circumstances. In addition, you have to talk about qualitative information like income and expenses, how much are you making, how much are you spending. And on that, you need additional information like inheritance, divorce, settlements, anything like that that may color the picture a little different. Now, this information is the core of the equation. What do we have to work with and what interest rate and total return are we needing to achieve and is it realistic? This is a big one. So many times that people say, oh, well, I saved for it. Well, they may not have gotten there because they took too much risk or the risk didn't work out. Just because you're taking more risk does not guarantee a reward. Just because you play black doesn't mean you're going to (laughs) win. So just because you save for something doesn't mean you're going to get it. But if you follow some tried and true situations, you probably will have a better chance of getting there. Now, appreciating that it takes many personality types to make a world, and what do I mean by that? Some of my clients need to have the shiny, bright, newest thing, and you know, some honestly couldn't even think about spending that kind of money, and why would someone pay full price for a utility like a car or a nicer apartment or a nicer house. (laughs) So that individual decision is going to be as much of a contributing factor in how much needs to be saved for a specific goal in the future. And, you know, will we need to take more risks to achieve said goal? Does one make enough to save for that vacation palace or do we need to downgrade the asset or uh, goal to take more potential risk, (laughs) which may in either case still make it a a shack. Anyway, also you have to figure out, does anybody in your family suffer from poor health? How much time do we have to work with? Is there a relative that can't support themselves or could potentially become a financial burden or otherwise? You know, I have an example. I have a client who is pretty well to do and they were approaching the asset destruction phase of their life, as as they put it, which is to say retirement when you start spending all the money that you save. And uh, their sibling passed away, and now there's an obligation, which was not financial. Luckily, they saved and they had money to leave to their child. But now they have to spend time and be present for a child that was not originally their intention. So, you know, is that vacation house feasible now? Are you really going to use it as much as you thought you would? These are the questions that we have to come up with, and that's where we'll leave it today. Thanks for joining.